Nuremberg and Matei's experiment. Once scientists determined that it was a three-letter code and a three-letter combination code for amino acids, scientists wanted to know which three letters code for which amino acids. Nuremberg and Matei took a poly U homopolymer, which is a whole string of U's connected together, and a cell-free extract to simulate a living cell and put it into a test tube. They then added just one radioactive amino acid to the test tube. They then added just one radioactive amino acid to the test tube with the poly U and the cell free extract, as well as 19 unlabeled amino acids. The procedure was then repeated in 20 tubes, each containing different labeled radioactive amino acids for every trial. The idea behind this experiment was to see if the radioactive amino acid used during the experiment was incorporated into a string of amino acids. They discovered that the only time they could get a radioactive label incorporated was in the tube that contained labeled phenylalanine. This meant that when the radioactive amino acid phenylalanine was present, that they were able to form a protein, meaning that the codon UUU specifies for the amino acid phenylalanine. They then tried the experiment with a poly C which coded for proline, poly A, which coded for lysine, and lastly, they tried it for poly G, which never ended up being activated. This meant that they had figured out three out of the 64 codons that we know about today. Nirenberg wanted to continue his research and began to work with another scientist named Leder. However, they approached their method to finding codons a little bit differently in this experiment. They realized that when a short mixture was passed through the nitrocellulose filter, that the tRNAs that were paired with the ribosome bound mRNA would get caught on the filter, but the unbound tRNAs would pass through it. They did the same experiment over and over again using different radioactive amino acids each time, so that they could tell if the radioactive amino acid would bind with the ribosome. They allowed the tRNA to bind with the ribosome and codon, and if they all ended up binding together, they would get caught in the filter paper. If the tRNA didn't bind with the radioactive, then it wouldn't be caught by the paper. They used this to identify 61 other codons. They used this to identify 61 other codons, which allowed us to have a coding dictionary that we use today.